And that, welcome to this video in which I'm going to share with you three exercises from my list technical exercises uh, book here, linked below to the PDF. And what I did to, for this video was I just opened it to three random places. I've uh, marked them in the corner. And I just thought the theme is going to be not just the technical exercise in here, but to use the theme of the technical exercise itself as a way to personalize variations because just doing dry technical exercises is quite boring but all the music that you ever play involves you know fingering and technique so you do have to spend a bit of time on them sometimes the first one I opened up was to page 80 book 10 and this one says extended broken chords in different combinations and different fingerings to be played first forte and slowly with strong finger action and then mezzo forte and fast with the fingers close to the keys. So lots of variations already there. Uh, by all means, download the PDF, have a look for yourself. It's free from IMSLP website. Um, so there's lots of things here. Different combinations, different fingerings, fast, slow, etc. So that is true in itself to every technical exercise. But the broken chord thing uh, is good because you, you have it's important to practice chords in different keys. So I just thought I would spontaneously show you the kind of things that I would do, so I haven't prepared any of this, only the pages, uh, if I were to do what I'm encouraging you to do. So before we get into there, as always, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, it'll help you through all the videos. Um, Walter Peanism syllabus, for the more philosophically minded of you, and uh, perhaps Patreon. So the first one, I'll, I'll jump into the key of, I don't know, F, and it was broken chord. So of course you can go all the way to the beginning and just play with the left hand, with the right hand, and then both together, a broken chord. A broken chord is where you play its inversions, basically, and you, and you move, and like, whereas an arpeggio, whereas an arpeggio is where you take one chord shape and just play it up and down, which is kind of my, one of my styles. I have a video on helping you play rapid arpeggios. It's all in the thumb, basically. So. That's the very simple thing to do, of course. Now, a variation I used to do, and I probably would do now, so here's the first one, is that you play with, you use the same two fingers on both hands. So let's take a chord. I was in the key of F, so let's play F minor. Just simple F minor triad. Let's not get too complicated. And you choose two fingers on the left and two fingers on the right, and you only play the chord with those uh, fingers, so we can c consider that a kind of broken chord concept. So I might play ring finger on the left and index on the left, and on the, on the right I might do index and middle. So you're getting a nice sort of brain breaking exercise as well as precision in a new key. And each, if you do the minor triad or any chord type in different keys, you're going to get different finger variations. So it's really, really good. But instead of just trying to run up it really, really quickly, to do it in like a pattern, to just kind of find a kind of feeling a rhythm that might work. So for me, I'm kind of feeling, let's just see what happens. That kind of thing. So that just came out. Let's just do another one. So you're kind of breaking up the chord with a bit of variation just to make it a bit more interesting. So that's one that you, you can do. Uh, another one I would do is to find your natural fingering. So in this case, that would be little finger and middle finger on the left. Index on the C, and the right hand just using thumb index middle. And I would uh, use, like, play each interval twice. So, like that. Uh, that one I just did with the same two fingers on each interval, which you can do from the previous one. But what I meant to do was, and then just keep in the same position and play the next interval like this, and then C to F to play the whole chord. it down. That kind of thing. Just moving around. But the basic theme is broken chords from the random page. Another one to do is to bring in the left hand and make it sound a bit more musical. So uh, let's just take uh, the F minor. Let's, G, let's move up to G minor this time. And the left hand you might kind of go, let's put a waltz into it. I'll do it down here. Just a simple G minor waltz. And you can play that um, 
broken chord a bit more melodically as if it's some little Chopin like a bit little bit of Chopin or something so we can see the G minor uh, chord everywhere you're not thinking about inversions and then just kind of play it okay with a kind of broken style but a little bit more melodically and why not play it with octaves as well so let's just get the rhythm down I'll do it really slowly for you and I might just kind of go Just moving around a bit more melodically sounds quite nice. Do that different chords, different keys. It's pretty pretty good. The uh, other one I wanted to say is maybe do it in octaves with both hands. Let's just jump to uh, I don't know what I have we done D D seven. I'll do a four note chord now as an example on D seven broken chords. You can do it directly by literally you know just for the precision, which is quite nice. But another one to do is to uh, what do you call it, like alternating octaves, which is quite quite a nice thing to do. So your right hand leads on the way up and the left hand leads on the way down. Uh, and you kind of go, this is the basic version. You just play the chord, but in this kind of, that kind of thing, but the left hand leads on the way down. But of course do that, but breaking it up. So you're not just gonna play the chord uh, in order, you're gonna break up the chord a bit. So you might go from the D to the C, and then the A to the F sharp, A down to the D. A, C, F sharp, A, D, that kind of thing. So you're really jumping around the piano. It's kind of fun. I'll do it the left hand leading. Oh, what do I play there flat? That kind of thing. Really, really good for the precision and a nice physical workout as well. The next one, of course, make your own up as well, was um, page 71, uh, which was... Uh, ah yes, this one says, this exercise was probably suggested by the Chopin Etude, Opus 10 number 2. It nevertheless has the advantage over the Etude in that the left hand is given equal emphasis. And again, you don't have to do exactly the one in the book. By all means, have a look for yourself at this, number 71. But the idea, just <coughs> looking at it visually, made me think, ah, okay, we could kind of make that into a chordy one, because I'm always wanting you to learn chords and play them properly. But to move each individual finger around while the other ones stay there. So let's just take uh, a simple triad. Let's take, uh, what have we done? E flat. So you're just gonna play the chord with both hands, like it says, get a workout everywhere. So you're just gonna play the chord, but each note you're gonna move around a whole step up and down chromatically. So the f let me just say it slowly and demonstrate. So E flat, for example. Your thumb and little finger playing the lowest E flat are going to move up two semitones, back down to the E flat, and then back, and then down two semitones and back again. So you're going to get a kind of, and then you're going to roll the chord again, but this time the G is going to move, and then the B flat's going to move. Which is very good for precision. You might just use the same chord and do that chromatically so I'll just do it from C up a few notes so C C sharp oh no sorry other other note the E in the middle and then G so each little finger is getting a nice little workout but you're also reinforcing a particular shape so I'll just jump to C sharp uh, C sharp getting up yeah okay and then the F is going to move and the A flat's going to move sharp whatever key you want to consider this in and then on D move the D on the F sharp and yay these are just nice little things to just warm up fantastic exercises to do so that way made me uh, think of doing that exercise as a way to interpret that technique itself which is in the book and then the third one was page 166 a bit nearer the end uh, and this one, I just looked at it and I just thought, yeah, great. Page 166, uh, to be played forte with strong finger action. Emphasis should be given to the raising of the fingers as this aspect is as important as the striking of the keys in this type of exercise. Okay, fine. So you can do it exactly as written. Fine. But it reminded me of something I used to do all the time and I used to enjoy it. 
I used to take a whole diminished chord, just because it's symmetrical and you know, you know, all, the, all the diminished chords just feel nice under the fingers of my computer anyway. And I would just roll the chord and then you play each note sort of eight times or so, so uh, while the other ones don't move. So it's a bit like the other one, but you're moving only, you're just re re repeating that one note on the same. I don't know, you're moving the same finger on the same note, so... So you're playing it louder, so I it's just a really nice exercise to do. Let me just do it on D hold diminish, and just do it with random notes. So this time I might just choose the F. And the next time I'll do the B. This is just really, really useful exercises because they help you to play the piano, basically. And uh, it's a shame to just think that technical exercises are, you know, boring and you shouldn't do them. I mean, even Chopin wrote etudes, which themselves focused on a particular technical aspect. They just sounded quite melodic. Uh, so don't don't neglect technical exercises too much. So I recommend that you get this book and have a look at it uh, online. It's a free PDF. I guess you can buy a physical version and just open it to a page and uh, sort of either do exactly what it says or just look at the pattern that it seems to look like. So this one seems to be triplets and uh, chord, uh, block, like co block chords in triplets with a feel of triplets. So then you just think, okay, so I'm just doing this one spontaneously. I did prepare that one. So that one you might just think, okay, uh, what could I do with that? Let me play chromatically a chord type in triplets going up the chromatic scale. So let me just take a sixth chord both hands and I might just kind of go in six chromatically and then change the chord to another chord so I might kind of go six so C like that that's quite nice you could continue that of course and go like one two three four five six you know do it in group in patterns of three but my idea was to take that concept and just go in six and then when you get to E flat and the E and the F you'll do a different chord like major seven might do minor sevens and you might do hold, no, do, uh, hold diminished so you're forcing yourself to play different chord types in different keys and that just came from seeing a block of chords written in triplets you see that's the kind of idea instead of doing exactly what's written so hopefully you'll have a bit of fun with that and you'll do it a bit every day and you'll really start to enjoy the sort of independence and flexibility that your fingers get by doing these kinds of things so there you go really as always, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Waterpeanism, Syllabus, perhaps Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.